Good morning. It's D-Day. Not just David Day, because it is my birthday. Um, 4th of March. And I generally celebrate my birthday like over a whole week, sometimes a whole month. I usually let everyone know that it's my birthday and it just rolls on. But I got the best birthday present ever. Because all week, you know, or for the last week, people have been saying when I talk to them about my birthday, oh, how old are you this year? I'm like, oh, 43, and yeah, and feeling it. Anyway, I just spoke to Sharon, who's almost a year older than me, and we were talking and she was saying, oh, so uh, how does it feel to be 43? Uh, sorry, to be 42, and went, what do you mean? She goes, yeah, I'm 43 in 11 days, so you're turning 42. I'm like, what? No. I pretty much, I committed the last six months to thinking that I was turning 43 today. I'm only turning 42. So I got a whole nother year for my birthday. <laughs> it's the funniest thing that's happened to me for a while. So, um, but that's not, all, that's not the only reason why it's D-Day. It's D-Day because um, we're heading off to the Pyrenees today. So that means I got it's, it's gonna be a busy day because the car has been at Steve Allen's uh, all week or DNA getting mods done. I, I'm gonna go and show you the new suspension that we put in it this week because there's nothing else like it. It's, it's brand new. Um, I'm gonna get this thing ready because usually I would have been, you know, filling the water tanks, the diesel heater tank and loading it. I just haven't had time. So I've got to run around and do that this morning, run out to the yard, get some suspension, drop it to DNA for a build today. Then, I haven't had my car, so I haven't been to pack my tools, my recovery gear. Um, I'm so underprepared, and we want to get away, you know, four o'clock ish, I suppose, and get to Border Town and stay there tonight. So, I'm going to run around and just show you my day, but also all the things that I've been up to during the week with building the car, because there's been some late nights. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, this is a bit about, before I pack the car and everything, I'm just gonna show you some stuff. This is a bit of what I've been up to during the week. Um, so this is how the back's looking at the moment. Still playing around with this um, drawer thing. Um, got it sitting much more flush now. But yeah, there's still development happening with that. Um, <laughs> busted this clip, and I hope I can find one because that's gonna drive me nuts all week if I can't fix that. Um, the way that the drawers are sitting, is so at the back here, I can have my travel buddy on one side, um, all my solar controllers and everything are under there, my switch to turn on the rear light on the roof is there, and then I can junk electrical charging gear, all that sort of stuff. Next, I showed you last week um, the roof rack and, and what I did. We've wired the lights up to a dual switch. Yeah, let me show you that, because I think that's kind of interesting. Um, this is a new thing that's out. Okay, so there's so little like real estate here for your switching gear, especially on the TILs. So now we've got this little device. So usually that slot takes up a whole, you know, switch, just one switch. Now I can do my spotlights on the front bar at the bottom and my roof light um, light bar on top. I'm yet to actually um, turn them on at night time to see what they're like. <laughs> so I don't know if they're all lined up, but we're leaving oh, sometime, Asabe. There could be night driving, I'm not sure, but at least I should have a good amount of light because um, there's plenty of animals in the Pyrenees. Um, inside, outside, sorry. Let's get, this is the exciting bit. So I'm gonna shut my door because I can perv on the car with the door open. All the bush barriers are on, light bars on, but this is this is the exciting bit. Well, this is the bit that I'm excited about. Can you see anything different now? Bit of a sneak hint. I'll take it underneath and have a look. This is the different part. I'm gonna set that up on the tripod, I think. We'll just set that like that and we'll have a bit of a chat about it. Oh, this one's got a dent on it already. Okay. I think I'm in view. This is a brand new lower control arm that we've developed from the ground up. 
couple of scratches. That's just due to air freight, because we all prototypes we air freight backwards and forwards. But um, this has had a significant amount of sort of engineering going to it. This is the third one, um, colour coded blue for on the third run. What we've done is put um, CV boot guards on the inside and outside just to try and protect the CV boots. Um, everything's thickened up. Um, at the back, I'll see if I can get under to show you the back. Hang on. Ah. I just crawled under there. I need to raise the car up a bit. But the reason why it's not as high as it used to be is because I've had this thing in my mind for a long time. Being a South Australian, we're allowed to have 50 mils of lift overall. So that's uh, including tyre lift. So if you have a two inch lift and uh, a 35 inch tyre, arguably it's um, a bit sketchy. I think WA and even Queensland may have the same rules. Victoria allowed to do it, uh, you can have both. So what I've been wanting to do is build a one inch lift for the lower control arm at the front, which is exactly what we've achieved here. So I'm actually <laughs> riding one of the lowest patrols uh, I've ever driven. Um, but we've done that, we've got one inch lift at the front um, and the way my coils worked out at the back anyway has turned into a one inch lift. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm going low rider this weekend I'm very interested to see how that affects up travel and um, yeah there's a few other things we did on the suspension as well like we lifted the point under the bump stop I couldn't actually get the camera in underneath to show you um, so you can just continue to use the factory bump stops and uh, we moved the whole eye bolt where the shock goes through at the bottom uh, forward because that's where the natural geometry is um, so few little things it has to be tested like this is not a, a product like it needs to have a lot of testing um, I've got to go on corrugated roads I've got to go off-roading do lots of things but it's exciting um, especially oh, without calling too loudly but you know there may be a, an option to have a small GVM, GVM upgrade without going the full-blown GVM upgrade with sort of a um, We'll see. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, all right, next. I've got to start putting the back of the car together because I haven't got all the drawers and stuff sorted out totally. So i um, probably going to do what I did last time. We always put <laughs> both um, seats up so the kids don't fight. And then I put all my um, recovery gear in one box and um, tools in the other box. And then I've still got everything on top of the fridge for, you know, air compressor first aid, that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna start putting all that in right now, and then I've gotta go and start the rest of the day. All right, so if you wanna know what I take on a trip like this to the Pyrenees, so I'm gonna be out there pretty much on our own. This is what I take. I'm not saying this is what you should take or whether it's comprehensive enough, but this is kind of what I take. All right, starting from tools. I've just gone to a, a tool kit now. I used to have spanners and stuff all over the stock shop now just take that one kit and that gets me 90 percent of the way what's not in there is in this box over here and that's you know the angle grinder the multimeter the extra wires cable ties my favorite pliers that sort of stuff that gets me the most away until i sorted out where to put a compressor i'm just taking this little one in the box you need to have tree trunk protector and a toe strap these I used to carry about four. I've got it down to just one now, and I'll show you why in a sec. The evolution here, this is what I used to have as my recovery hitch at the back. That is heavy, and there's a lot of mass in the D-shackle. I'm really motivated to get me and everyone else off D-shackles. So then I went to this aluminium jobby. This weighs, oh, it's like, I reckon a kilo, not even. That's less than a carton of milk, like half a kilo maybe. That is light, but there is a sharp edge here to get um, a shackle through. So a D shackle will go through there, no problems. But as I said, I don't like mass. I take extra stuff with me just in case someone forgets and I can loan it to them. This is what I'm taking for this trip. It's the, the Sabre Donut, um, but this is quite heavy. I'm waiting for like an aluminium version of this to come out, which I believe isn't far away. Um, same as pulleys. 
I used to take two pulleys. Um, now I'm going to get rid of one and take this um, this sabre um, pulley. So that's not too heavy. I reckon that's carton of milk. What's heavier? Oh, that's heavier than that. Um, so that's that's in the kit now. Next is um, dynamic rope or kinetic rope. That's a must now. Like the the flat strap stuffy does not work for a patrol. Um, it doesn't stretch enough. This stuff has got a lot of stretch in it. It's, I don't know, 12 ton rated. And then um, I've got the, the monkey fist. I need to like do my little monkey fist sign. But um, they've been well used. I think they're 14 ton. Um, got to have a dampener. I actually would like to have two, maybe even three of them in my kit, but I've only got one at the moment. Um, and then the obvious stuff, first aid and, and that sort of stuff. So all of this, I want to fit into drawers in the car when we get to that, um, when we're making these modular ones. But for now, it's probably gonna fit in these, these two tubs. Ooh, she's bright around here. Um, all right, at the yard, I'll show you some suspension while I'm here. So, you see on our website, it says suspension, basically, uh, you know, in stock. And that's kind of the way we like set it up. But uh, there's not just one suspension. It's, uh, and I feel it's worth talking about this with the Y62s, um, because depending on what weight you've got on the car, depends on what suspension we're gonna offer. Usually um, when you, you know, message us or whatever, and say I wanna buy a suspension, the first thing we'll ask is what's on the car. So uh, if you've got no weight on the car at all, um, on the front, here we go, front, we will put what we call the light arms. So that raises the car two inches. Um, and if you've just got, say, a Predator bar only, um, they don't weigh that much and make that much influence. So you can just get away with what we call the light front arm. Um, now, when you have a Predator bar and winch or a TJM ARB, um, Rhino, like one of the heavier bars out there, then um, we do a different lift. We do this uh, mid one, um, that's that one there. And it just means that the, the bracket on the lower control arm is just that ever so slight bit taller. Um, and that allows, so that goes underneath the HBMC shock and uh, it allows just for a little bit more sag in the, um, in the coil. So day one, when you fit it up, it's probably like a 60, 65 mil lift, but it will settle to 50 if we set the front up that way. In the back, we've got, um, we use a variety of coils actually, um, old man emu and some ride pros, but you can have various different um, coils for the back. So if you've got no weight on the car at all, kind of like mine, um, we end up putting um, the light coils in from, from ARB. Uh, if you've got a rear bar or a long range tank, so not both, one or the other, then we'll put the 2987 coil in, which is this one down there. Um, if you've got a, a heavy car, um, say rear bar and long range tank, we'll put the 2988 coil, which we don't have, they're out of stock at the moment until like June or something. There's such a crazy thing going on with coils and full drive parts. Like a month ago, I couldn't get the light coils. Now <laughs> I can't get the heavy coils. The medium coils have always been in stock. Um, so when you are looking to um, get a lift kit, just, um, just send me a message. Tell me what weight's on the car. I'll tell you what we've got and then you can order it and off we go. Anyway, gonna throw some suspension in the car because we've got a we got a job to do today. As I load this up, um, I forgot a very important part about all of that because uh, people say, "Oh, I'm going to get a long range tank and a rear bar." You can't put the heavy coils in without the weight on. It'll sit so high, it'll sit like so standard. They pretty much sit about five thirty mil from center of wheel hub to eyebrow height. That's too to that point there. Uh, give or take well, on all four wheels. Um, when you put the heavy coil in, the 2988, it will raise it 100 mil. So I go from 530 to, you know, just over 600. Um, and it, it ends up like a, you know, three or four inch lift. The, um, 
and then all the wheel alignment goes out. Um, so the, when you lift the, the car up, the wheel comes in, um, so you lose your camber. And we put camber correction bushes in as well, but it just doesn't work. So you've got to have the weight on the car first. Same with the front. Quite often people say, oh, I'm going to put, um, you know, a front bar on. I just want the, the medium one now. You, if you put it straight on, you won't get um, your wheel alignment right. It'll be awful. You'll start scrubbing tyres and you think you're saving money by doing it that way, but you chew out, you know, a set of nice tyres. Uh, you lose caster, so um, uh, I've gone by memory here, but when doing wheel alignment on a standard vehicle, Y62, I think they want sort of, I don't know, four to five degrees caster. When you lift them two inches, you only get about two and a half. When you put upper control arms, you get about three and a half. Um, funnily enough, with this one inch lift that we did, we, would get, we could get almost five if we wanted to. We ended up set, setting it just, um, um, just above four degrees. And straight away, I noticed that on the steering wheel, um, it feels heavier. And when you're at high speed, it feels like it toes, not toes, it drives in a straighter line. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, I've definitely driven cars lifted without control arms and towed and that's when when you're changing and overtaking a car for example and you change the camber in the road you need a lot of driver input to keep it straight that's where caster fixes this thing um, and pretty much every lift we do now we'll put upper control arms on to fix mainly the caster and a little bit of camber well, it's been a crazy day got everything set up with Steve's, went out to the yard, dispatched, so all you lucky people are getting suspension, so I just dispatched a heap of it, and um, I'm going to get under the car, because I know some of you are going to want to see the underside of this, uh, I'm going to call it the Smurf suspension, <laughs> the one inch little blue suspension, I'll get under the car and show you. Alright, here we go, this is going to be, oh, I don't know, how am I going to get under here, put some cars in here to make it a bit better, <laughs> it does look a bit Smurfish, doesn't it? All right. So I'm laying on my stomach out of the car. You can see everything's yeah, gusseted and um, super, super strong. Now, bits to point out. Okay, Ugh. bump stops. That's the factory bump stop. Um, and then I've just raised it up. I think about, I can't remember if it was like 30 or 35 mil. And um, to like have that increase there. Um, and I've matched it to try and get it the same as the factory setting. So on full droop, it's about 80 mil and I think uh, about 25 mil um, when it's on flat ground. Then over here, that's usually where the sway bar goes for uh, the STLs. And I'm not going to ignore you STL guys because I was one. So when you want to run a sway bar, that hole in the factory arm is too low when you lift it and do like a, a coil lift and a lower control arm lift. So if you're ever going to do like a, a one inch lift with this arm and a two inch coil lift, that increases the sway bar um, hole so you're not flexing as much um, well you know it's, it's not putting extra force under the sway bar but that's it it's, oh, it's hard to get in there but yes I'm gonna coin this the Smurf one inch lift which is a bit banged up under here holy moly anyway all right <laughs> time to go hook up the van I reckon all right it's hitching up time like we have to use the hitch this one last time um i've noticed if you make sure she's all lubed up and she's gonna wipe it down make sure this is cool oh, make sure this is doing what it's supposed to be doing um that's your best chance of getting this thing to behave same with the uh the van end or the boy end you might say i'll make sure that is all lubed up and that gives us our best chance of hitching up without this causing me dramas. It'll be interesting when we get to camp, because this campground, I've been there before, pretty much the whole campground's on a slant, so we want to get there early. So I can get like the, the flattish sort of spot with this massive van and the McHitch, because that's when the McHitch gets unstuck, I'm afraid to say, as if it, it's loaded up. Uh, it doesn't want to connect and it doesn't want to disconnect unless the, the connection is absolutely perfect. Been 
down a little bit here. So you notice the system I did that, it's not necessary exactly the way that um, you know, uh, airbag, uh, poly air or the airbag people say to do it. Uh, they say that you should air up to like whatever you're gonna go to, which I go to 45. Can go to 60 with both the poly airs and the airbag man, but I think that's like at the limit. So I only ever go to 45 and you'll notice I didn't actually, with my Navara, for example, with their bags, you'll see the car lift up. With the patrol, they don't tend to do that. So um, what you have to make sure is that you uh, pump up, pump them up before the, the weight goes on. Otherwise, um, all it's doing is, all it's doing is in, like helping the spring. It's not really changing height. I don't know if I conveyed that very well, but if I go too high, then I can't hit, uh, get them a hitch going and I have to change my jack setup and everything. So I hitch up, air up, then I lower um, my um, my jack, so then the weight comes down and that's where that sort of helper effects. Uh, if you're getting a drop in say, oh, less than 25 mil, I think that's acceptable. Uh, if it's something like 40 mil, you got the wrong springs or the wrong uh, airbags. And I kind of wish I went and measured that before and after then. Might do that next time I hook hitch up because um, I haven't done it with this car yet. All right, come and hook up. Could you get out of here? All right, we're off. I'll tell you that feeling when you're just like escaping the city, I, I love that. And <laughs> doing it on a Thursday is like a double good feeling. Um, we're 20 k's from home and straight away, I was gonna actually not comment about this until I got further into the trip, but instantly I can feel like the caster, the advantage of the caster. Uh, caster is king. So that's the front wheels basically moving forward, almost like a, a three-speed drag, so the further forward that it gets, um, the better. You just feel it. The whole car and van as a system feel straight. There's less driver input. I'm enjoying that part of it. Uh, the other thing I did, I've just hit 10,000 Ks in this car, and um, I've noticed that the first 10,000 Ks, all that driving up to Queensland and back in January, is the trans flaring between gears. It's always like in between selecting a gear, and I remember my first Y62 did this, and then it kind of went away, and I actually think it's to do with um, the trans fluid. That they put like this trans fluid for life. You're supposed to never have to change your trans fluid. It doesn't matter if you're towing, full driving, anything. It's supposed to be there forever. I think that's BS. So, um, 10,000 K is old. We've done a trans service, and I wanna see uh, if that's going to, sorry, I'm about to run over a cyclist at the same time. Multitasking. So, um, yeah, we did the trans service. The oil was clean, so I'm not wasn't too fast. But um, and we didn't like get rid of all of the oil. We just like did the first six liters or whatever it is and changed the filter. But the the filter did have a bit of a shimmery sort of metal metallic sort of look to it. Which um, maybe that was that um, cruiser canyon that I was doing up the Land Cruiser Mountain Park and I just cooked the trans because I drove in auto instead of um, four low. But so this trip, I'm gonna sort of assess one, how the wheel feels with caster and two, how the trans feels. Like, you know, it's brand new, uh, it should be perfect, but I'm gonna see if there's an improvement with flaring of the gears whilst towing. So I'll, I'll let you know when I'm on my way home, I suppose. So we're 220 kilometers into this trip. I must admit, I haven't actually experienced a trans flare up. So it might have done something. I need to do more to be absolutely sure. Uh, next thing to test though, the, when I look at my rear view mirror, it's got that beautiful sort of um, uh, blue to orange as the sun's setting behind us. But it means we're going to get to use the spotlights and the roof lights soon. So I'm very keen to see if this uh, roof light's any good. Um, like I know the Narbas are always going to be better for penetrating distance. I uh, haven't even had time to line them up, so they might be pointing at the trees, you know. But I do want to test out this um, light bar, so that's probably the next thing you'll see. Let's go. 
border town little stop. Such an awesome place. Sun's just just coming up over here. So um Galar's gone crazy. We get them at home now. I've still got to listen to them. But anyway, so um we're gonna have a quick brekkie, probably a cook up just over here. Really good overnight spot, free camp. Buzz through, we do this all the time. And um, I'm gonna try and upload this video so you can see this today being Friday the 5th. But then we're going out of reception to the Pyrenees. I'm pretty sure there's a stack of cars coming. So I'll be out of reception. I won't be able to upload anything until I'm back, but I'll do the normal sort of daily vlog video. And um, you get to see all the action pretty much straight after it's happened. So um, I'll see you on YouTube on probably Tuesday. Yeah, yeah.